welcome to episode number three of the Jodie Bunting podcast, where today we are speaking with the famous Derby Slimmer, Tracy Lomas. Hey. Hey. Now, let me give you your full introduction. She is a slimming superstar. She has lost eight stone all by herself. Is that right, Trace? Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah, it is. All by so, myself. <laughs> the, the, you know, the headline in our local paper here, the Derby Telegraph, it was, Derbyshire woman loses almost seven stone without a slimming club. And it was like shock, horror. You know, she's done it without Slimming World. <laughs> she's done it without Weight Watchers. How did you do it on your own, Trace? Um, I got a phone call from my GP after my local, uh, my annual diabetic checkup uh yeah. it was november 2019 um the 18th of november was the phone call i'd had the um diabetic review on the 14th the nurse had said oh you're 1711 is that correct and i was like and what because like last time i got on scales i was 10 stone two yeah um so i was like oh seven stone i can do that i can lose it uh the gp like i say rang me on the 18th saying that my blood results were doubled in the last like six months of my last um review uh and i'd got to do something about it because i was i was quite poorly um so i was like right okay so she went through my daily sort of diet with me um we sort of discovered that everything was quite carb heavy um because i'd be getting sort of toast for breakfast because it was quick yeah then because i only have half an hour at lunch it was like a pot noodle or the mug shots, so pasta. Um, coming home, it was like dinner was on, but I'd be like slicing bread and butter just because I was hungry. And I'd be having bread and butter while my tea was cooking. Um, and again, you know, that would either be pasta or the potatoes and whatever. So it was a lot. It was really carb heavy. So the minute she mentioned carbs, I was like, well, I'll knock them on the head then. So she says, that's quite a drastic change. I went, it's what it takes. If yeah. it takes that. Uh, so, of course, it was prior to lockdown, the infamous lockdown. Um, I did manage to get a couple of face-to-face -face appointments with a diabetic nurse. Yeah. So I had, she, I went, um, the GP had said that they were going to give me a, the blood glucose monitor. I'd got to do the finger pricks seven times a day. I'd got to do it like before breakfast, two hours after, et cetera, et cetera. Gave me a diary to fill in. Um, I had a four week sort of time scale to try and turn things around before I went either back on metformin or other medication again uh, that I'd been on before years ago. Um, so when I went to see the, G uh, the nurse, sorry, four weeks later, I'd lost a stone Amazing. and my diabetes had gone basically. Wow. Um, they and gave what, me another, sorry. I was just going to say, what was it that scared you the most? Was it the fact that they said you had high blood pressure or was it the diabetes? Was it the thought of being a diabetic? I think it was the diabetes yeah. being back. It was the diabetes being back. I'd been off medication for so long after losing it sort of 12, 13 years ago yeah. that I didn't want to go down back, that, back down that route again. Um, I'm already on, I'm, they keep me on the diabetic register, so I get like the free eye tests and things, and I have the annual review, um, but that's as far as I go. I didn't want to go on medication and that again, I'd, I'd been off it for so long, I really didn't want to go on medication again if I if I didn't have to. Um, and I'd proved that I could do it with diet before, um, so I, I know I could do it again. Now, we all know it's so easy, you know, to gradually put on weight. You know, we've all been there. We've done that. The whole yo-yo yeah. yo thing. But how did you personally, how do you think that seven stone crept back on with yourself? Um, I'd got into a new relationship um, and it was, you know, a bit of, bit of well, comfort eating. Yeah. He was quite a, he was quite a chocoholic. So... Yeah. Um, and he also, you know, it was all the all the fast foods, uh, which admittedly I didn't always join in. I didn't always partake. He was quite into the spicy food as well. So I didn't always, 
you know, um, partake in like the pizzas and whatever, because he'd have them like mouth burningly hot. Um, but I was having spaghetti bolognese, so all the pasta and yeah. the portion sizes were his portions, do you know what I mean? Um, and it, it, it was just, we enjoyed food together. Um, and it was like I say, it was portion control more than anything. And like most people, do you kind of have a wardrobe as well with kind of bigger sizes? So it wasn't that much of an issue that you thought you were putting exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, I still had some of my older things. Um, I mean, I did have to start and buy um, new clothes and that was a, a bit of a wake up call to me, but still did nothing about it. Yeah. Um, like I say, and it's like I said to the GP, I, I'm a fool to myself, really. I mean, I'm I'm not a kid. I should have known. I should have read the signs, you know, that they're getting up in the night for the loo. Um, I just put it down to an age thing, to be honest, you know. Um, and it's not until you were hit with that, the results, you know, that they had doubled and they were quite severely high. I mean, she actually said to me, how, how did I feel? And I hadn't gone line dancing that particular night. Like I said, I remember it as though it was yesterday. Um, and I says, oh, actually, I, I'm in bed now. I says, I'm not, I, I really don't feel very well. And she was going to call an ambulance. And I went, oh, no, I'm not that ill. And she yeah. went, well, these these results are speaking otherwise. And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I said, I'm all right. I said, I'm all right. And that's when she said, you know, we'll have you the uh, glucose monitor ready at the surgery for you to pick up tomorrow. So I sent my mum. I went to work and mum went and picked everything up for me. Um, so like I say, I was I was quite poorly. I'd got no get up and go. That had gone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was out of relationships, and I I thought I'd started making a turnaround of my life, but clearly not enough. So what sort of things were you eating when you were at your biggest at that point? So it would be potatoes with every meal. You know, it would be the pastas. Um, and like I said to you earlier, it would be the toast. It would be the yeah. bread and butter while I'm waiting for my tea to cook uh, because I was always hungry. Um, because obviously now, um, readdressing my lifestyle, um, I know what foods will fill me and will keep me full. Um, but to, to me, I never had time to do all that. Everything was convenience. Everything was quickness, um, which obviously, no. you know, they don't they don't keep you full. But don't feel bad about it because, as you know, it's the norm. You know, most oh, people yes, have yeah. toast or cereals for breakfast. Most people have sandwich for lunch and most people have pizza or yeah. pasta for tea. So you were actually just being normal, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm the world's worst. I I will now because I've, I've changed my lifestyle. I, it's not a diet. I've never, eat, I know, don't use the D word. Yeah. Um, it was a lifestyle change because before I counted calories and that's easy to sort of go over your calories one day and go, oh, one, one day won't hurt, but one day leads to another and another and it snowballed for me, like I say, uh, and then getting into a relationship where you don't count calories at all. You know, to me, you know that, that went out the window. Um, so now it was a lifestyle change and fortunately really for me, I mean, unfortunately for a lot of people across the country, but fortunately for me, through lockdown, we became um, like a skeleton staff at work. So it was we worked on rota basis. So when it was like my either week off or two weeks off, um, there were all these online charity like um, ski. You know, there were I did like a different charity walk or whatever um, every month. I did twelve through lockdown. I did twelve different charity um, exercise. You know, ten thousand steps a day and do 30 miles in January and things like that. So when Boris said we could do the hours exercise a day, I did that walking around the local <laughs> you know, countryside. I'm fortunate to live just on you know Shipley Park kind of thing at the back of me. Um, so I walked around Mapley Reservoir and onto Shipley Common and um, I got me, got me steps in and I did a different charity every month. Amazing. Uh, so like I say, through lockdown, I did 12 different charities. I've got all the T-shirts because it was like sign up, get a free T-shirt. Um, and yeah, so that, that really helped me. And during that year or a year period, you actually lost seven stones in a year, didn't you? Yes. Well, that, that was, again, like I said to you, I am my worst bully, basically. My goal was to do it in a year. 
Yeah. Um, and I'd got to, because obviously then when lockdown hit, I we didn't have uh, doctor's appointments and whatever. So I kept in touch with the GP via email um, and I kept giving her a monthly update of the weight. And she knew I'd set myself a year to lose that seven stone. Um, and I did it just over. I mean, I've still got the email somewhere where it says, I've let myself down. And she's like, no, because I mean, I'd been on Erie Osh Sound. I'd been, like you say, in the Derby Even Telegraph. I'd even done a woman's magazine article. Um, she says, what you've done is amazing. So I said, yeah, but I wanted that seven stone. And I think it was a couple of weeks after. It took me a couple of weeks after the, uh, the year uh, to lose the seven stone. Now, for everybody at home, I'm going to put on the screen now your before and after photos. Oh, now, Tracy, no. <laughs> what do people say to you when they see your before photos? Can't believe that's you. They always say it's, that. Can't believe that's you. It's You know, people are surprised when they see before and after. Yeah. Yours are really shocking. No one actually believes it's you, do they? No, no. Why do you My think work's it bad. I've got an ID badge, obviously, for work, and the, the picture on the lanyard is still the big me. And I'm like, oh, dear me. I mean, the children say, who's that? And I'm like, it's me. And they're like, look, <laughs> look, and look again. I'm like, it is me, honestly. Look, it's got my name on. It's me. So, I yeah. Think the, I think it's because you look so much younger. You know, that's the, the big thing. People can't grasp that you could look 10 years younger just by being yeah. so, so lighter. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I said it's still me. There's less of me, but it's still me. It's still the the same old me. So let's talk about. Um, you know, you didn't do it with the Slimming Club, but how did you get linked no. up with me? We kind of met through a mutual friend, didn't we? Well, yeah. I mean, I've sort of known of you. Hold on one sec. Yes, have a drink of your herbal tea. Yeah, <laughs> my my super fruits. Um, I've known of you obviously since Big Breakfast days. Yeah. Um, and a couple of friends of mine did your um, like dance bit and did your classes, did aqua fit and things. So I've known of you for a, a long, long time. Um, and you also used to do the, the warm up for like the weight race for life. Yeah. So that's where I sort of first, we didn't meet, but I saw you and obviously you used to join in in your pink outfit to be your pink get up. You used to do race for life with us. Um, so that's and when I, I first made... kind of. I'm glad I made a note that you uh, you remembered me, Trace. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, 15, 16 years ago. Yeah. Easy. Um, so, but through you, um, it was kind of, obviously, you was on Facebook and whatever. And I thought, well, I've known you for, for a long time. So I'll just join, like, your group just as, you know, a bit of inspiration and a bit of things that I might have forgotten or, you know, a bit of new info. Um, but yeah, and like I say, and that's when I'd seen that you did the um, the part run as well. And I was like, oh, if yeah. you can do it, so can I. <laughs> and this is where things got serious when I met you, because you'd lost seven stone. You kind of did the the Telegraph thing. You did a national newspaper, uh, national magazine. But yeah. you wanted to lose another stone. You were kind of yeah. you hit plateau, didn't you? Yeah. Why do you think you hit plateau? Um, I'd... I mean, you do, don't you, anyway? I mean, anybody, any slimming club or anything, you, you always plateau. Um, and I think I'd got to the point where I was comfortable in what I was eating. So body had got used to it. My exercise, I hadn't upped it. Um, and I was just doing the same thing day in, day out, which I was happy doing. Yeah. Um, but I think I needed a little bit more. So that's when I joined like Fighting Fit on a Wednesday night, which is like a Taekwondo type boxing uh, fitness class um, for a little bit more. And then, like I say, I'd, I'd seen you in the July that had done your, your first. Well, no, you'd done it a little bit before I joined in July. Uh, you'd done the park run, but walked it. And I was like, oh, so <laughs> if you can walk it, so can I. I've been walking for over a year. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. So let's talk about part run then. So what when you first started, what time did you walk it in? Um, I walked it in 48 minutes because it was a bit of a walk and a run, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, yeah. what is your current personal best, Trace? So Mark Eaton is around 35 minutes. 
Yeah. And I run the whole thing apart from Cardiac Hill. I, I walk the second one. I run up it the first time, but I walk the second. <laughs> um, and Alveston, I'm down to 30, 45. Amazing. You see, it's almost yeah. half. You've almost halved your time, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And what time period was that in? Uh, well, I've been doing it. was a year in July. I've been doing it a year in July. I've done my 50th now. I'm on 53 part runs. Which means you now get your red T-shirt, doesn't it? I know. I've got to send off for it. I've just got to get around to doing that. Um, but, yeah. And for anybody out there who maybe is anxious or, or worried about doing part run because they can't run, what oh, is your man, advice? I love it. It's the best thing. I mean, I'm not a runner at all, but I love it. I look, In fact, today I've signed up for the uh, Race for Life, for next year's Race for Life, and I'm actually doing the 10K, not the 5. Fantastic, yeah. I'm doing the 10K this time because the part run, as much as I love it, I get to the end now and I feel I could do a little bit more. Right. Um, so I'm going to start and do some sort of 7.5, you know, 7.5K. And then hopefully by July next year, when the Race for Life is, I'll be able <laughs> to run the whole 10K. Now, with regards to health and fitness and stuff like that, have you had a recent uh, blood pressure report? Because you said right at the beginning there, when you made some changes, they said your, your blood pressure was dangerously high. Have you had it yeah. checked since? Uh, no, because obviously lockdown, we don't get like face to face appointments anymore. And the GP said to me, as long as I was happy and taking my own recordings, yeah, uh, which I was uh, because I wanted to come off. I'd got it into my head. I wanted to come off all the medication. So with Lou, when my weight started coming off, I, I rang her and I says, can I come off this last? I've got one last blood pressure tablet. Um, and she said, I've got to have so many uh, recordings of uh, she gave me a, a limit of what it got to be in the bottom figure had got to be under whatever it was 70 I think it was or something what she wanted it yeah. under so I was like because I'm not not obsessed but I do get determined I am coming off that medication um so I kept doing the readings at different times of the day um and I said so I says I don't know whether these are right but I mean to me they were dangerously low but she says no that is that is somebody who's athletic now i was like oh athletic me i've never been called athletic in my life but yeah i'd got a resting like heartbeat and whatever of somebody that was quite athletic so i'm like oh so i'm not so i'm not going to keel over there so she goes no she says as long as you're not feeling dizzy uh, and you don't go lightheaded and i says well no i says i feel fine i says that's what i i didn't know if my monitor was you know needed i've changed the batteries and everything but she says no there that's fine but no i've not had a face-to-face -face appointment at all um since yeah me diabetic ones back in 2019 now let's talk food okay because we all we, everybody thinks you know when you you lose weight and you go on a diet you have to give up all crisps chocolate sweets yeah. but the, the good thing about your story instead of just giving up chris you actually swap them onto those pea snacks and those lentil curls didn't you yeah yeah i mean i don't even have them now to be honest uh, I needed that in the early days uh, because I needed to feel like I was still having the crisps. Uh, so for me at that time, they were the healthy alternative. Um, I mean, it's very rare now. I mean, I have the, you know, the uh, proper corn um, yeah. and like Metcalf's popcorn. I have that if ever I get the urge, but I've been without it for so long now. It, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I've got one or two packets in, just in case. Um, and I've got the, what am I on at the minute? The mini cheddars nibblies. Cause oh, they're yeah, really like, so, yeah. So they're really like, so again, it's just that little, but yeah, because I was looking at the, uh, the lentil curls and to be honest, they weren't, they were better for me than crisps, but yeah. they weren't actually that good for me because the, there was quite a high fat content in it. Um, but I so, think it's all about step by step, like you said. Oh yeah. At that point, it was very helpful on reducing your calories, and, yeah. and they, they did contain less crap, shall we say? Yeah. So they yeah. actually did work for you at that point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like I say, I still have them from time. Even if I'm out, they'll be there healthier 
alternative than go in and get me um, because a packet of crisps, I mean, they're half empty nowadays. It's the grab bag I, I used to have, <laughs> you know what I mean? All those uh, sharing packs that I didn't share. Um, but yeah, so I, like I say, I still have them from time to time, but they're not as, they're not stuck by my uh, side like they used to be. Now let's talk meat, because I know you love a bit of plant-based, don't you? What's your favourite thing? Yeah, that, that's really shocked me this time, um, because the, I was not vegetarian at all and, and never professed to be. But when it came to like Lent, I was like, well, what can I give up? I've not got anything left to give up. So I was like, oh, do you know, meat, I'll give meat up. Yeah. Um, so I did it last year. Well, I did it two years ago um, and did it again last year. And to be honest, I have more meat-free products now than than I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Um, but like I say, I still do have meat. I still have the odd steak, especially if her a blood donation's coming up. Yeah. I will have a couple of steaks. Um, and spinach. I've never touched spinach in my life, but oh my, I love it. Love it. I really do. And like beetroot. I used to turn my nose up, don't like that. And I was like, I had the beetroot burgers the very first time I gave up meat for Lent. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is not bad. So mum says, well, have you actually tried beetroot? And I'm like, no, I don't like it. And she went, what do you mean you don't like it? And I went, well, I don't like it. Just try it. And I, I love it again. And I say, yeah. yeah. And, and would you agree in saying they're actually, because I find vegetables and, and vegetable or plant-based alternate actually more flavoursome? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I found some uh, the meatless meatballs. I think they're Aldi's ones, actually. They're absolutely so meaty. Yeah. And they're not, you know, they don't contain the meat. They're lovely. They really are. And falafel and only, everything like that. I, like I say, I love it. Now, with regards to exercise, as well as doing park run, what other exercise were you doing? So I... Obviously, through lockdown, I did an online hit, you know, when we could only sort of go out for an hour at a time. Yeah. Um, I went through various YouTube channels. I got in with some American woman, but she, oh, it was just the, the voice just got on my nerve. And I'm like, I'm not going to stick to you. I need to find something else before I lose interest. Um, and that's when I started following um, Lucy Wyndham Reed. And I, like I say, I do 40 minutes of hers. I've got like a bit of a playlist and I choose what I want to do. Um, and I do 40 minutes every morning now. Fantastic. And not only every morning, but what time in the morning, Tracy? Amaze everyone. I am doing my workout any time between five and quarter past. Amazing. And do you, do you automatically get up at that time or do you still have to set your alarm? I've got an alarm. I mean, I'm usually stirring about half past four, but I've, I've got an alarm for quarter to five. So, yeah. Right. So let's talk line dancing. Now, my memory oh, yeah. of line dancing is remember when Emmerdale Farm launched their CD? I mean, my yeah. sister used to go off out line dancing with some cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. Oh, is that no, you? No, 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 no. Is this a new no, generation? Back, back in the day, back in the day, it would be. They'd all be there in the check shirts. Um, but no, it's not like that anymore. Uh, it's, I mean, the two classes that I go, to, it's the, my mum's classes, um, but the two classes that we go to are more a social um, event, really, because a lot of them are sort of 80 and 90. Yeah. Um, so a couple of them only get up for a, the sort of the really basic ones. Um, but no, I, um, I get up and lead, start the dancers off now, uh, because obviously mum's not as able to do it anymore she just sits there and she's dj and um yeah and i get up and uh, i start them all off and teach the new ones and whatever but yeah so there's two classes of that a week every monday and thursday um wednesday is my fighting fit night friday is my free night <laughs> tuesday i call bingo for a i can't call them wrinklies but the me uh the my group that i've been doing for about nine ten years now and it just from going what what you're saying, you know, it's just it sounds like you're just being active all the time. Yeah, yeah, because I walk to and from. Um, 
the like the hall up at Stanley Common. I walk to and from that to go and do yeah. like unless it's raining because I'm only a fair weathered walker, obviously. Uh, and I walk up to line dancing on a Thursday night. Monday is a bit more tricky because it's in Horsley Woodhouse, so we go in the car to that. Um, but yeah, so anything anything I can walk to, I will do. Uh, it's like when I go to the local cinema at Elkiston, it's only three miles, so I walk to and from Elkiston, um, weather permitting, like I say. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about your son. I've met him at Park Run. Uh, is he being dragged along or is he asked to come? Uh, I asked him yesterday. I asked him yesterday if he wanted to do it and he did it yesterday and he run. And actually, at the beginning, I'm I'm running off and I'm like, see you at the at the end, son, you know. And we're coming, <laughs> we'd gone around the first cone and I'm running along and I was like, I'm sure that's him in front of me. So I got to like up me, up me pace a bit and I got up closer and I'm like, ah, have you got in front of me? And he just laughs. I was like, right, I'm not having you winning me, son. So I ran alongside him for a bit, and then when it's downhill towards the tunnel at Alverston, um, yeah. I use that I use that downhill as my advantage and sort of see you at the end then now. And I was about five minutes in front of him, but yeah, but no, he, like I say, he gets the choice. I don't drag him along. Yeah, he either goes for a McDonald's breakfast with my mum, or um, he park runs with me. I can vouch for it, you though. He enjoys it. You know, I can see. The smile yeah. on his face, even when you're running ahead, you know, he's he's really focused and he's, he, yeah. you know that he's going to do it. You know, yeah. there's no like, yeah. oh, I'll just sit here and wait for my mum. No, no, he said it. yesterday, actually, when I when I caught up with him and we ran alongside for a bit, because I mean, I don't run and talk at all, I can't. Uh, but yesterday I was like having a little bit of a conversation with him because he says this is the furthest I've run without walking. So I still keep it up. I says, and there's no shame in walking. Yeah. I says, what you're doing is doing it. You know what I mean? I says, it was that cold yesterday. I says, my focus is just getting to the end. I don't care on time yesterday, to be honest. It was it was finishing. Um, and as long as I ran it, because like I say, I know I can run it now. So that was my, that was my goal, just to get to the end. So. Now, when, when a lot of people see your photos, hear your story, they want to know one thing, Tracy. What do you eat now? So give us a typical day what you currently eat. So it's either porridge um, or sort of wheat mix in the morning. Yeah. Uh, then I have, uh, we have a 15 minute break at work. So it'll be a piece of fruit then, or um, one of those raw skinnies bars. Um, I have, either salad or like corn cakes or rivitas and whatever at lunchtime because again i only get half an hour so it's it still has to be quick yeah um and i'll either have a low-fat yogurt or a piece of fruit again and then my tea is anything from like you say the plant-based things with spinach you know, a spinach salad or whatever to um my roast butternut squash roast veggies and anything really fish salmon uh, my, my bassa fillets and steamed veg, anything really. Just not potatoes and pasta and rice and <laughs> bread. <laughs> yeah, it's the complex carbohydrates, you know, that get to so many diabetics. Yeah. So it's great that you've realised that on your own and you've done something about it. Yeah. So really I don't welcome. have caffeine now either. I don't have any caffeine. I don't know where that came from. I think that was from when I had COVID yeah. last sort of uh, new year. Um I don't know what it was, but I couldn't stomach coffee or normal tea. Yeah. So I stuck to like lemon and boiling water or lemon in just my bo yeah, water bottles and the fruit tea, which I've always liked fruit tea anyway. Um, and like I say, I can't stomach tea with you know normal tea now. And I do have the odd black coffee, but I don't enjoy it. It's only if I go somewhere and they don't have these herbal teas on offer that yeah. I, I have to have like, a, I mean, it's like we called when we dropped Billy off today, we've called at Grantham's uh, McDonald's and I picked up a black coffee because they don't do herbal tea. And I didn't have one with me to have any boiled water. <laughs> yeah, so McDonald's, if you are listening out there, please do a yeah, nice please. tea. Come on, yeah, please. get with the programme. Even if it's a peppermint tea, I don't <laughs> yeah, care. Yeah, any, any, it's fine. Yeah. Right. Now, I want to finish off, Tracy, by asking your top tips. But before I say this, I will read out a comment on the Derby Telegraph website from your story because I love it. It says, 
Well done. What a transformation. I lost weight the usual way with suggested slimming organizations a few years ago, gained it all back and a lot more besides. They don't they address the physical problems, but they don't look at the mental side of it. I admire anyone who does it on their own and makes changes for life. You are an inspiration. Yay. So Lucy, <laughs> for all those people out there that see you as an inspiration, what are your top tips to lose weight? Right, top tips is get active and it's not setting hours upon, you know, it's it's a few minutes. I started with four minute workouts. Yeah. For every, anybody has got four minutes. You know, the adverts in your favourite TV programme are two and three minutes. Just get up and do something, even if it's just a few knee lifts, anything, getting up and going upstairs to go to the toilet, anything. Go and put the kettle on. Um, just move, move more. Um, cut down because I'm nobody. I, I mean, everybody I spoke to was like, oh, I can't cut out. I can't do without this. I can't do without that. If you can't do without it, just reduce it. Yeah. Any any small change is a big you know, is a big change, really. You you might think it's small, but it's quite a big change. Just cut down and sooner or later, you can actually go without. Um, like I say, I, I did it. And if I, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Great. Tracy, as I said, you are an inspiration. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. You're welcome. Um, I will see you again at Part Run very soon, my darling. Thank I'm you sure so you much. Will. Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.